Hello, this is Divine Sunshine, your spiritual intuitive um, life coach. Um, I am here talking to you about my first series of angels. Remember I said I was going to talk about the angel series. I forgot. Now I put this over to the side, which is um, I will be talking about uh, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, and Archangel Uriel. So it's a four week. So this is week one. You can play this at any time that you want to. Uh, I was going to start out with Archangel Michael. However, Archangel Raphael jumped in front. Uh, and it is due to a lot of things that is going on with um, Notre Dame today. Notre Dame had um, burned up. It burned up at 650. How cataclysmic is that? Love, the number six. Love is when it was reported it was on flames. And you got the five zero, which is five, the change, and zero is closing of a cycle. Okay, so um, I sat here and I channeled the message from Archangel Raphael about what in Notre Dame um, burning, what it is symbolized. And, you know, to me, when everything, anything that happens, metaphorically, there is a symbolism. And I think that pretty much came to me from the way I was brought up um, through my own spiritual beliefs um, that everything, even in the Bible, has a metaf uh, metaphysic um, symbolism. Thank you, Archie Rafa. You're just trying to... Um, symbolism behind everything. Okay, and so I'm going to start off with this because this is going to lead into the four things that I want to... Um, tackle in this um, series, which is, again, um, banish your fears of failure and abandonment and rejection and isolation, uh, to release any guilt and shame and judgment. The next day, day two will be release any guilt, shame, or judgment you have around money or success, to forgive yourself and others for any mistakes past, present, and future, and to heal your chakras and physical body okay um right now today what we're going to handle is to banish your fears of failures abandonment rejection and isolation so you can manifest abundance from a place of love and joy now with this you'll see in today's channel message that i got for archangel Raphael how today's events of notre drain being burnt down gave way and gave birth to something new which is uh, i know the people of paris do not understand it at this point however um elizabeth lund talked about that today was a day of um this being april 15th was a day of um transformative loss now isn't that funny she did that earliest morning and then she's way over there i forgot where she's in um she's one in one of them danish um countries uh that she's over there and it was just it was daytime then and she put out their transformative loss which to me is the title of exactly what is going on with notre dame and the people of paris because of my understanding of the people of paris are already kind of hitting the point of kind of rebellion because they was having some issues uh, my understanding about classism, about uh, the middle class and some things. And so the president was supposed to talk about that today to kind of help bring peace, kind of settle the people, the Parisians' minds uh, about what was going on. And then this happened. So I'm going to read the letter and uh, I hope I can read because I was the channel message I got from um, Archangel Raphael. And it says... Notre Dame symbolizes the foundation of one's beliefs. It shows how at times we must b uh, burn, must burn old beliefs in which we use as a foundation for where we are now. It is not a mistake that this happened during a time in which it is holy communion with the Christian beliefs and people. We are at a time when a newness must resurge into how we connect with spirit. At times we have, uh, 
looked to old leaders and ways of connections with not only our spirit with each other. We do understand that the people are upset for this location is more than a cathedral. It symbolizes years of beauty, power, strength to the Paris community. However, this is transformative for it allows a new way of of um, giving, I'm sorry, my little handwriting, capitalism to reign. Uh, way of giving capitalism to reign. Hence, the structure and the tower still stand. This is a lesson to all that one of, one of the ways in which newness must fall. And I think in some ways I was saying in which, um, new, in which it was channeled to me. Oh, sorry. This is a lesson to all that out of the ashes, newness must fall. Thank you, Raphael. Okay. So even out of, and we can take this into our own lives, that really with these things, we have so many things that we said, especially going on this journey, as far as where we want it to be or where we seem it to go. And then, you know, the whole thing's, Really what what's going on with the moon and us having this mental purge is really getting rid of all this stuff. Just like Notre Dame. The inside, the old beliefs, the old religious beliefs. Religious beliefs to me when I see that religious card is like seeing that over and over them those thoughts that you just over and over and over again do the same things. Things that you adopted like habits that you do over and over and over again. It becomes religious. It becomes a religion for you. And so, at the same time, what I'm seeing here is that this Notre Dame symbolizes an outwardly physical symbolism that's saying, you know what, you know, we got to get rid of what's going on in the inside here. You know, the structure is good. The thumb and the foundation of who you are is good, which is the outside. This is this. Physical. We can use this as a vehicle, but what's going on in the mind and these chakras and all this stuff, this got to get cleared out, okay, in order to make room for this newness. Like they say, we're moving, leaving one dimension to the third or the fourth D, and we're going into the fifth D dimension. So a lot of this has got to be left because it's got to go on. Just like when I was sitting there at the table with my mom and I seen it, and I was like, oh, I said, you know what? I said, but you know, at the same time, there's some good in this. I said, because as I'm looking at it burning, I'm just looking just like everybody else. I said, oh, my God, it's going to burn down. They're not going to have anything. But then when I was looking, I was like, well, wait a second. They got the outward structure still there. Uh, you know, the, the, it's the, the, the inside, of course, all of the artwork that they have. Uh, they say they believe that um, also that the crown that was believed that Jesus had is also housed there too so that's probably gone because that's made out of wood it's gone but then i told my mom there i said this is also the time that with this happening this could also present a miracle this is a way that opportunity present itself for a miracle to happen too we had somewhere the fire here i think uh, one of them maybe it's on facebook i seen and it was bad fire and in that fire all of the bibles was untouched i mean nothing happened to it we don't i don't know i'm taping this so i'm not looking at no tv so Right now, the time is, I could clock it, 4.58 here in uh, Chicago, Monday. So, you can see, I can show you my time for you see my little babies. I don't know if you can see the time. I was about to say that. Okay. Or you can't see because it it's across her little face there. But, um, um, that really, you know, it, the time right now is really... We, we don't know what kind of miracles they might could be presented by this. And like I said, we have here in Chicago, we had the same thing. A great one of our noble fires, and we were very upset about it. it was a great Pilgrim Baptist Church that did that. Everything burned down. And it was historical for the birthplace of everything that was gospel. You know, the one that made uh, lift every voice and sing came from that church. And all of the notables of uh, gospel music. Uh, came to that church and came out of that church and um you know it sat there for a long time that's because they didn't have funding but um uh, and just I, I used to pass by that all the time when i used to have my condo over there on 63rd over there on the east side and all you would see was just you could see clear through it 
nothing but just the walls. The wood, the stone part was still there because the whole stone part was there. But you looked in and said, oh, my God, the roof is gone. Ain't no the nice, beautiful pews that was there. You know, you looking all in there. And it's gone. They had stuff around it. And so later on, years, once they did find found it, somebody that wanted to do it, they turned it into a museum. Now, they're not going to do that over there in Paris to do that. Like I told mine, they have so many things like drawings and stuff. I say somebody could come along there and rebuild it the same identical way like it was back then. You know, I said, because if they do it for movies, they could do it for that. And, you know, but it's going to be they're going to learn from their mistakes. I say, I'm sure some of them also were walking around and saying, God, I wish we could do this, but we could do this. Like I heard the um, fireman talking about, it. he said, well, you know, you can't put sprinkle systems in there because when you got them old uh, landmark um, historical places, you know, you got to be sensitive to the structure. That's just like life. You know, you can't put nothing new into that structure if you are already uh you, built upon old beliefs you can't add no other stuff because it's already packed in there so there's the same thing just like we could take this for life as well um that we've got to practice we got to get rid of the old stuff our old beliefs our old religions just like that to, to be able to do that they took the old baptist uh pilgrim church built a museum out of it same thing like i said they're doing the inside I believe they're going to probably do it the same. I'm scratching my head. So I believe they're going to do it the same way. They're going to do it rendering as close as they can back to the original way it was. But they're going to use materials that, you know, they're going to remember that. That's what? Not like, m less flammable. Remember that the cathedral was made pretty much in wood back then was the structural um, materials that they would use. I'm sure they're not going to use it this time. Same thing, just like with us in life. You're not going to use the same materials that you learned did before because you should have learned from your past mistakes. What made it burn down last time? I'm not going to make the same mistakes like I did before. So that's the same thing uh, that you can learn from the burning of Notre Dame because we know, although we're crying right now in the present tense, I feel my prayers. I send love and light to the people of Parisian right now. But again, uh, also, there is hope. There is a silver lining in that. You've got the outside structure, the two towers, which remind me of the twin flames. Still, no matter what goes on the, in our lives, everything else might burn down. Our structure, we're still here. Things that have happened to us, we're still here. The twin flame journey, guess what? It's still here. Although you didn't burn it down and got rid of your old beliefs and stuff, the twin flame or the journey or the ascension journey or where you're going is still there. No matter what you do, how much you want to get rid of it, it's still in existence right there. I'm doing it like I'm there because this is the face of it. And back there is the, twin, and there's the two towers there. Because I said, oh, this might be, I said, now if them towers get to burning, that's another thing. Say we're going to have us a big, massive tower moment. Because at first they were saying, in the, in the ascension journey, first they were saying it was looked like the left side was catching fire. I'm like, no, not the feminine side. You know, I was like, oh, Jesus, why not the divine masculine? I'm just saying, in symbolism. But you know what? If it did burn down, what did that mean, people? That mean divine sunshine. Does that mean that it's time for the divine feminine to burn down her old beliefs and to become a new divine creature? Okay, so if it did happen, that did. So um, let me make sure I did that. So we've got to banish our fears of failure. Again, this to them right now, to the Parisians, this is a failure. You know, I'm sure some of the things they, they look back when they look at it and say, oh, my God, we didn't have enough ladders. Uh, the ladders was too small. The uh, You know, they weren't able to reach the fire power that we had. You know, we didn't have any kind of way to tackle it right. Maybe the strategy we did, oh, my God, is this a massive failure? Because, you know, just like anything that happens, you look back and say, I could have did this better. I could have did this better. I could have did this better. And, you know, again, this is a learning lesson for you to go back and see, okay, you know what? I didn't do it right the first time. But you know what? This is a chance to look at it and say, okay, I can get it right this time because I can look back at my mistakes and see how I can make it better. Okay, so sometimes of us, when we're working, Archangel Raphael wants us, let me channel through him, 
He wants us to understand that fear of failure is a lot of times for us on this journey is a blockade. We are failing. We have fear of having success in this journey with our twins or with our divine unit souls. Okay. And so with that, we've got to find ways of how not to, you know, is this like, okay, go through the scenario through your mind. If you got one thing that you're thinking about, you might want to do, you know, kind of play it out and say, okay, now what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay. You know, and then ask yourself, you know, is this really something that it actually can happen or is it my mind playing tricks on me and making it worse than what it is? Um, we, we got to fear the fear and, and do it anyway. Okay. Because that's a lot of things that like you, you think of yourself is if I stay doing the same things over again, because of this fear, is anything going to change? No, all I want to do is keep on complaining about me being the same situation. Uh, nothing's going to make any kind of differences in my environment, my money, uh, me being in a relationship that I want to do, and that's I go ahead and just go step out on faith. Call on Archangel Raphael to help you uh, when you have those moments in which you're trying to figure out, you know, what is the best pop uh, possible way to do that because, you know, he helps with creation and, uh, you know, a lot of things creatively and help you to find creative solutions to things as well. Um you, a lot of times we are affected uh, and scared about doing things because uh, we're scared of rejection. You know, like, okay, what if I do? So let's think about it if you're the divine master and you're thinking about approaching your divine feminine. You haven't talked to her in a while. You know, your thing is, is like, okay, now will she reject me by me um, reaching out to her or trying to talk to her? You know, you never know unless you go and try spirit again, pray about it, ask Archangel Raphael to be with you, and just really see, not check with your mind, but check with your heart to see if that's the best thing to do. Um, we have to really get rid of all these things because, again, uh, in, in isolation, because sometimes we don't, you know, we get into those things like, oh, the energy is not right. I don't really feel like being bothered with anybody today. I just want to just be here in my feelings and that's it. And, you know, that's that's really um, is adding on to the blockages that is occurring between you becoming closer with your um, your divine counterpart. Um, that's something that you've got to really check into and get a firm hold on of that feeling of isolation because sometimes it's not you. I want to say sometimes it's even darker forces that are um, really getting you in the point to making you feel that, you know, you want to be isolated. You know, a lot of times, sometimes I've even with myself had gotten to the point that with those moments that I feel like I need, I'm in isolation uh, and I know it's not come from a good place. Most of the time, those are the times that I find I'm get blessed in, you know, because it was one time I remember I didn't want to go out someplace. And um, I was like, no, nah, I'm just going, you know, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go back home, and that's it. And then something I ended up, I had to either run an errand or something like that. And then I ran into somebody I hadn't seen in a long time, had a very good conversation. And I said, see, there you are, I don't want to be by with nobody, all up in your feelings. See how you would have missed out on that blessing. So sometimes, you know, that's that's not the way to go. All of these things, uh, we've got to get rid of the fear of failure, the, uh, the abandonment issues, the rejection, the isolation, because um, those things are blocking us from uh, abundance manifesting, okay? That's even in our joy, in our love, uh, in our place of love and joy. That's what I wrote down. And... We've got to get a handle on those things. Um, some things in which you can do is um, you need to really, uh, especially doing exercises with your uh, root chakra.